Charles White Elementary serves the MacArthur Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, one of the most densely populated sections of the city. Because of the area's large community of immigrants, one of the school's most significant challenges is a lack of English proficiency. 80% of the student body are English learners, and many of the school's fifth graders are two or more years behind grade level in reading. Despite these challenges, fourth grade teacher Isabella Yurkovitsky was rated a most effective teacher by the LA Times based on her students' progress on California standards tests. On average, her students gained four percentile points in math and seven percentile points in English compared with other students at their grade level. Yurkovetsky refuses to accept the low level of performance that the system often expects from students of similar backgrounds. Instead, she feels a responsibility to push her students harder. Table number five, what are you guys working on? You are working on question number five. Every time I look up, there's a lot of socialization going around. Question number, uh, table number one. We're doing assessment three. You saw an assignment number three? Yes. You finished with your questions, correct? Yeah, I finished the questions. My personal philosophy is if we set bar really low, these students are not going to rise to it. Like, I feel like, in a way, more parallel to physical therapy, where you kind of have to be a little bit tough and say, I know it hurts, but you got to make that step. Because if you don't make that step, you will never walk. So, how did she get hurt? I know you know, even uh, if Angela knows. When I teach, I demand that everybody sit up and have their hands up and look at me. So I do not operate on fear, I operate on respect. Let's come in, put our backpack, get busy with daily, daily bites. I try to create a community. I just try to recognize every student and have them have a job, have a part, have a responsibility. And Manuel is going to lead us to Mr. Prado's shake tent. 10986654321. So they have ownership. This is their classroom. And my look a little crooked, not perfect, but this is, they made it. And so they take pride. And hands and eyes. Okay. Let's go once, let's go over the rolls. Lift your right hand, lift your left hand. They're both working and we have the rules over there. Okay, what is our rule number two? Okay, let's do it. Raise your hand. So, where, which habitat would we find this plant? Daniela. In the, in the desert. You know what, I think this calls for a little preposition, because I heard at the desert. Let's all stand up. In, on. In, on. In rooms, spaces, and lines. In rooms, spaces, and lines. We stayed on Maui. We stayed on Maui. They work in that room. They work in that room. Those pictures on the wall. Those pictures on the wall. In, on. In, on. In, on. Most of my students are English language learners. And in their first language, they don't have a rich vocabulary. My students just say, give me that thing, give me that thing. So in class, a lot of times I try to find names for everything. At first I thought it was because they don't know the English word for it. But first, let's go over some vocabulary. But then I overhear them speak in Spanish, and they call it a thing in Spanish as well. Dropper. What word do you see inside the dropper? What word do you see that you know? Hey, Emily. Drop. We see drops. Okay, what is this? Spoon. What kind of spoon? Remember I told you? Tea tablespoon. No, it's a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Let's give it some adjectives. What is it made of, Alicia? Plastic. Plastic. Excellent. So, Max. So, listen to this. Max, did you live in Russia? Did you live in the desert? Did you live in the desert? Uh, okay. Okay. Slowly, slowly, I will try. Okay. So his mother bought the plant. Mama, what happened then? 
Положила мне в чай. Я попил, вылечился. So she put gel in his tea. So he drank and he got better. She squeezed the plant. Squeezed, yes. My grandma had the same plant. But we did not live in a desert. It was really cold, lots of snow. But this plant is very hardy. Whatever we're doing, I try to connect it. You know, I try to, if we're reading, I really try for students to make some connections with the text we're reading. What? I ask with a frown. Callie's smile looks like it's hiding a bad idea, and I'm not sure I want to know. Let's get the ax and split a log for the fire, she says. Because our students do not see reading in their families, they kind of have this really weird uh, concept of reading. They feel like reading just saying words. And they don't interact with the text. When I get to the door, Callie has the lantern lit and is dragging the rocking chair over to the wall. Don't stand on that. It's too tottery. I... Why is she dragging the rocking chair to the wall? Why? Is the chair steady or is it wobbly? Wobbly. What do you predict might happen? Wobbly. She might fall. She might fall. What do you think, Manuel T? And she might fall and get cut. All right, get her. Okay, very good. I cry, and I run to hold the rocker while Callie climbs up. Oh my God! Oh my God! Hold on a second. What kind of chair is it? Rocking rocking chair. chair. Was it a wise decision? No. Rocking chair. Is rocking chair? It. All right. It's for babies. Stop. When the chair is still. So what I what I started I started was connecting, like connecting what they're reading about to something that happened to them, connecting it maybe to another story, or connecting it to um, something else they saw, but mostly connecting it to themselves. And that's, that's why your mom, when she's putting right and it's burning, she's yeah. probably saying, "Don't cry, it's gonna feel better." So Maisie is doing exactly the, the same, same thing. thing. Oh, okay, let's back to the book. Yes. Can you make a connection? Okay, go ahead. Is it because I'm like, mom told me a story that when, uh, when she was in Guatemala, mm -hmm. um, her brother, um, her brother was at um college and he was wearing those cowboy boots, mm -hmm. and he and he was walking down the stairs and he slipped and he twisted his ankle mm -hmm. and then um he was talking with him. Uh huh. Yeah. He, Pulled his leg. Oh, he said it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sometimes, like they well, do. That's my <laughs> okay. So we all have a we all have a connection. Aldair has a connection. Aldair. I broke my arm, and uh -huh. when I I said I was fine, and when we got home, I couldn't feel my arm anymore, and I uh -huh. couldn't move it, and so the next day, it got um, I I couldn't when I went to school, I couldn't write or anything, so they it was swollen, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you went to get it fixed, did they talk to you while they were fixing it? They always do that, right? So you don't think what they're doing. Anthony, huh? do you have a connection? Yes. Um, All right, I go ahead. I seen, this, I seen this movie where, where they... Okay, so uh, hold on a second. And Anthony now is making connection to something <laughs> else. else. A movie or a story. Okay, go ahead. I seen this movie where this, this, this um, girl and... Um, they were driving in a truck, mm -hmm. and they got crushed. Then the zombie came and ate, ate her leg, mm -hmm. ate her leg. Then she went to the hospital, mm -hmm. and then the, there was a war of zombies. Oh, they were, I know. They, you were watching Grindhouse. Okay, that you have to be 13 to watch that. So were they talking to her when they were fixing her leg? All right. Okay. This poem is Can you smell how sweet The teachable moment. That's what we want to have all the time doesn't happen all the time, but teachable moment when you have 110% when they made a connection, they're interested in the topic, and they really want to know all about it. There's a fad in our school. Students are making these little origami things called spinners, and they're really disruptive. But they love it. They love folding them and they spin them and um, they're crazy about them, they collect them. I, I have my own collection of confiscated spinners. Okay. I'm gonna have an art collection. I'm gonna have an art collection. So am I going to fight the spinners? No. Oh, they're all really into it? I'll take the spinner, I'll turn it, in, uh, turn it into a vocabulary activity. Isn't that a 
Compromise, education, especially, and celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate it. We are celebrating. I mean, I want to get their attention. I want to get their engagement. A teachable moment is when they're all engaged. And you never really know what is going to trigger it. California was part of what country? Mexico. Mexico, good. And Mexico was part of what country? California. No, Spain. OK, so look at the map of our neighborhood and find some names that are Spanish. Highlight them, names of the streets that are Spanish. What names do you think are Spanish? Carandale, that sounds Spanish to me as well. Okay, share with your group, share with your group. Is it even, no, because it's part of Spanish. All right, and then, all right. It's, so. I know, I know, I know, I know, because Why? And I want you to find out on your own who was Alvarado and who was Coronado. They were real people. Yes. Yes. They were people. They were people. But who were they? They were Spanish people. So why do they have Spanish names in California? Do they have the part of Spain? Because California, California is part of Mexico. Mexico is part of Spain. I'll stand the back. Okay. Chomsky said that language develops when we play games because we have to interact with each other. And hands and eyes. People that have finished their math test are going to practice their addition, subtraction, place value things, playing games. Still bored, Manuel? All right. <laughs> you have to wait till, it, till I finish the sentence. They learn to okay. interact, turn-taking, being polite, reading directions. They're like, oh, that's why I have to learn to read, so I could read the directions and play the game. If the fraction is not one-tenth or one-twelfth, take a piece from the draw. Oh, look, it sees right here. If you get one-fifth pieces, you get three points. There are directions there. Okay. Somebody should be checking the directions. Are no fault? Directions. The rule, games have rules. We have rules, but nobody tells us what to say. Whereas computer games, somebody already programmed it, what's, what's happening. And it occurs naturally. And they love it. came to the United States when I was 15 and nobody spoke my language so people automatically assumed that I was not very intelligent so I'm always cognizant how they feel right. of this powerlessness of not having a voice I'm just always giving them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they are, cannot express themselves because they do not have the language